I'm starting to think that I've been playing way too many crappy games. And, let's see, I want to play something decent, something, something good before I go back to my masochistic ways. So, today's review is going to be Nanotech Warrior, probably one of the best video games of all time. And it's difficult, too. So, we're going to play it until we win. If you've watched my Captain Planet review, you may be thinking that I just suck at shooters. Well, actually, I'm alright with them, and this is probably the one that I'm best at. Like most shooters, there's really no story to the game. But, in a nutshell, it's the 23rd century and the world is at peace, as nanotechnology has cured all diseases and has served every purpose for mankind. But now they've become self-aware, and they're trying to wipe out all life on Earth. So are you a bad enough dude to save the world? Why yes. Yes I am. Nanotech Warrior is a short game, but it's well worth playing. There's eight levels and they're broken up into two stages, and this is where the game breaks the mold of shooters, and this is something of the likes you've probably never seen before. Instead of having a side-scrolling or top-down perspective, the camera is situated right behind the ship, and the levels take place on the tube. You get to circle around the tube, and even at certain points, go inside it. Graphically, this game is astounding, and it almost looks PlayStation 2 quality, but I think that's due to the simplistic design of the ship, tubes, and enemies. Similar to how some 16-bit games were able to give the illusion that the system was doing more than it was actually capable of. The music is fantastic. It's an amazing techno style that gets your heart pumping as the game becomes more and more intense as you're flying through the tubes. Not only do you have to dodge enemies and their attacks, but you also have to avoid other obstacles and there are tons of them. So it also breaks another standard. It's not the typical bullet hell that you get from your everyday run-of-the-mill shooters. You can go through the levels without barely firing a single shot, as the game focuses more on movement rather than moving up and down destroying stuff. The controls are awesome. It feels like you're controlling a ship that's hovering along the ground. The movements are quick and responsive. If you're not used to quick movements though, you'll have to get used to it fast, because this game requires really good hand-eye coordination. The ship can jump with the X button, and if you hold it, the ship will be able to slowly glide back down. And because you can jump, there's really no need to worry about crashing into things. Square shoots your primary laser, and Circle uses a special weapon. L1 and R1 tilt the ship, and L2 and R2 flip it on its side. You can control the speed, holding down slows you down, and up speeds you up. And you better have those twitch reflexes honed by now, because if you hold up, you are going to fly and fast. And you will crash into things if you're not careful. After playing this game, I can't help but wonder why this game hasn't gotten a sequel, or at least gotten more recognition. It's unlike any shooter out there. It broke the mold and it did an amazing job with it. As you play the game, you'll mostly be using your standard twin laser that you start off with. But there is an upgrade that adds lasers that shoot diagonally, but it's really just a temporary power-up. But there's plenty of special weapons to collect, but you can only have one at a time. And when you run out, you run out and you'll have to collect another. For your special weapons, you get a mortar, which is probably the worst weapon. It does a good amount of damage, but it misses too much to be useful. Next, there's a wave of lights that move along the ground, which is really good and I recommend holding onto it because of its wide range, and most enemies are on the ground. Then there's three ground-to-air missiles, which are alright. Then there's another version, which fires six, and they circle around the tube instead of flying in the air. And lastly, there's a weapon that fires what I can only guess is a sound wave, and it's pretty powerful too. The first stage of each level has two sub-bosses that you have to defeat, and each sub-boss is the same encounter, so when you learn the first fight, you'll know what to do on the second. And after you destroy the sub-boss for the second time, you go right to the level boss. When you get to each stage boss, the control mechanics are different, because you'll be orbiting around it. Left and right are the same, but to go up, you have to hold down, and vice versa. So it's airplane controls, and will take some time getting used to. However, you don't have much time to do that, as the boss is going to throw everything it can at you. All the bosses have enemies around them, or they spawn extras, and you can destroy them for power-ups like shield recharges and special weapons. The sub-boss on the first stage is a ship that throws six bombs at you. It's easy to avoid and you can just shoot them away, but once they're gone, you can keep going as the ship will warp away, and this is the only one that you actually don't destroy. The first boss is a shapeshifter. It has a blue shield that circles around it and changes shapes as well. Just avoid or destroy the enemies that are around it, and when the boss turns into a cannon, get to the other side of it to avoid its fire. The second sub-boss will spit fire at two different ends, but to actually hit him, you'll have to jump in the air to attack. It's not hard as you can hit and move side to side. The mortar actually comes in handy here, as the boss doesn't really move, so it'll get hit pretty easily. The second boss is a flower looking thing. It has shields around it that you can destroy for power-ups, but the boss is only vulnerable when it's open and when it's open, it fires at you and will almost always land a hit. You have to move up and down, left or right to avoid its fire, 
but it's actually a pretty easy fight. The third sub-boss is a bigger version of the jumper enemies that you encountered earlier in the stage. Your best course of action is to use a light wave attack, mainly because of its wide range, because hitting it is going to be hard. It jumps around and fires two bullets, then a bomb, and it's the bomb you need to worry about. Use the light wave just before it lands, and you'll take him down with no problem. The third boss is tricky, as there's three jumping enemies, but they're easy to dispose of as one will be trying to attack you, and you can just shoot and kill the other two before focusing on the moving one. When all three are gone, the boss itself will start attacking. It will try to jump on you, but just move to the side and keep firing. When it's defeated, it'll just jump back onto the platform, and all you gotta do is just keep shooting at it until it's dead. Before I go any further, the fourth stage is a level that introduces barriers. You either have to jump over them, in between them, or avoid them completely. The fourth sub-boss moves back and forth along the tube, and it will also follow you. It fires bullets and a huge laser at you. The strategy here is to try and get him to follow you. As you circle around the tube, this way you'll pepper him with your laser while avoiding the sub-boss's attacks. But if you have the light wave weapon, it should make it an easy fight. The fourth boss is a little easier. He has shields that move up and down, and you can pretty much just stay at its level and fire when the shield moves. It will throw bombs at you that you can avoid, and then it'll start moving up and down. Just keep at it and destroy the four things in its center, and it'll go down in no time. Now, up until this point, the levels have been pretty tame, but level 5 introduces a new type of obstacle that can be hard to avoid if you're not expecting it. There's spikes that shoot out from under the ground. You can see them, but you're really going to be paying attention. And with all the shit that's going to be on screen, that's going to be hard. At this point in the game, the kid gloves are off, and it's going to start everything at a can at you. The fifth sub-boss fires bullets at you that hit pretty hard, but they are easy to avoid. All you have to do is just jump and attack at the center, and it'll go down like the bitch that it is. The fifth boss requires you to destroy the things that are orbiting it around it before you can actually attack it. After you clear the screen, you'll have to shoot at its legs. Just try not to get hit by the mines that it shoots out, or by its legs. Eventually it'll turn onto its side, and then you'll need to attack the small shields, before you can attack the red dot on the top, and that will open up and it will try firing missiles at you. Just try to stay to the side, and then you'll take them down with no problem. The sixth sub-boss is a tough one. It moves up and down while firing lightning at you, which you do not want to get hit by. It will do a massive amount of damage. You'll need something like the ground-to-air missiles to take it out easier as it flies in the air and moves towards the ground in an erratic pattern. But one thing that works is jumping from side to side in a hit-and-run type of attack, similar to how a cheetah takes down an elephant. The sixth boss has three rings orbiting around it, and you can mostly avoid those as they're slow to attack. You can destroy the shields, but they move out of the way when the boss goes to attack, so when the shields move, just move from side to side to avoid the boss's fire and unload on it. And it also hits pretty hard too, so just try avoiding everything that it throws at you. Now we're on to the 7th level. Remember the barriers that showed up in the 4th level? Well, now they've been upgraded to spinning barriers. Oh yeah, shit just got real. Because they are hard to avoid, and they also spin faster than you can move. The 7th sub-boss is a bitch. You'll need to use a side-to-side -side maneuver, as you can and will avoid your straight-ahead attacks. There's three things on the top of it which will fire big lasers, and it'll also fly in the air and drop bombs. And you have to destroy the things on the top to fully destroy the sub-boss. Your best course of action here is to try and use the light wave. And considering how far you've come, the seventh boss is actually pretty tame. You have to attack its moving tentacles while avoiding the two homing globs of goo that it spits out. Just orbit around it while moving up and down to avoid the boss's attack the best you can. It's not that easy. After a while, it'll open up and reveal its core. You can just stay around the setter and attack while moving side to side to avoid its fire. Before I get into the eighth boss, let's talk about the eighth level. This level will throw everything at you from the last seven levels. All except for the obstacles that rise up from the ground. And you'll also have to fight every sub-boss again, except for the first one. And the last sub-boss is actually the final boss. But all you have to do here is just jump and shoot while avoiding its projectiles. And then you get to go to the actual boss stage. The boss is a total pushover. Just unload everything you got at it. When it's low on health, it's just going to start spraying bullets at you. And it's going to be extremely hard to avoid them, and they hit hard. There's no real advice for avoiding them other than just try not to die. After you destroy it, you'll get an ending cutscene, and you'll get to see that your ship is upgraded, so you can actually start a new game just on a harder difficulty. Although it's not that hard, because the upgraded ship has lasers that come out of the side, infinite special weapons, and its movements are a lot faster. And that's Nanotech Warrior, and this game is a gift from God. And unfortunately, the only way to play it now is to actually have the disc.